This is the Patriot missile system, and we can divide it into 10 basic parts as shown here with all the interiors, revealing its complex parts and systems. It also has these small thrusters or short propellant motors that fire explosively to refine the missile's trajectory to its target. We'll also be diving into the step-by-step -step process of how this works, the missile system, and the basic comparison between the S-400 and the Patriot missile in the pros and cons sections to help us understand it better. So stay tuned and don't miss a beat. The MIM-104 Patriot is a surface-to-air missile SAM system, the primary of its kind used by the United States Army and several allied nations, and with the most advanced technology comparing to the S-400 missile. For a Patriot battery, it cost an astronomical $1 billion, while a single missile cost $4 million US dollars. Comparing to the S-400, it cost $500 million for a single battery, mobile long-range surface-to-air missile system. The Patriot is made up of six basic parts. Number one, engagement control station. This is the fire direction center for Patriot firing battery operations and is the only manned station in the firing battery during the air battle. Number two, electric power plant. This is electric power for operation of the fire control section, also called EPP. Number three, radar set. This is a multifunction, phased array radar mounted on a semi trailer. Number four, antenna mast group. This provides mobile, quick erect antennas and amplifiers for ultra high frequency communications. Number five, launching station. This is a remotely operated, self-contained unit with its own power plant. Can fire up to four Patriot guided missiles at designated targets. Number six. The Patriot guided missile MIM-104 is wingless. It does, however, have four tail control fins and is propelled in flight by a single stage, solid propellant rocket motor. Now let us look in more detail at each of the parts before we move into the step-by-step -step process. This is the engagement control station and can control up to eight launching stations through these VHF radio data links and are located above the truck. This is the main station number one followed by main station two, and the last one is the main station number three. Electric power plant. It consists of two 150 kilowatt turbine generators mounted on a five ton truck chassis. These generators operate primarily on diesel fuel, but have a multi-fuel capability. The electric power plant is connected to the radar set by three power cables, while the engagement control station is connected by a power cable and a control cable. Radar set. This is the radar set, and interestingly, it does not rotate. Let's look closely at its parts. This is the main array. Moving down is the IFF or friend or foe antenna. This is the TVN array or in full form track via missile. Moving ahead is the antenna lens assembly. Once in place, the radar's phased array radar antenna is elevated and locked at a 67.5 degree angle. Antenna mast group. This is the antenna mast group's protective cover. The antenna masts extend to a maximum height of 100 feet 11 inches from ground level, just like this animation. The antenna mast group provides ultra-high frequency communications required for the engagement control station. This launching platform is made up of three parts. This is DLT antenna in full form the distributed ledger technology responsible for continuously sharing data directly to the engagement control station. This is the canister and inside it houses four Pac-3 missiles. Moving forward, we have the electrical power unit that powers the launchers. This is the Patriot missile. So let us look at what's inside it. This is the fused silica radome. Moving to the back is the secret assembly. This is the terminal guidance package most probably contains the GPS of the Patriot missile. Just behind it is the modular mid-course package navigation subsystem. This is the warhead and weighs around 90 kg responsible for destroying the enemy projectiles. This is the inertial sensor electronics along with the gyro acceleration assembly. Moving ahead is a propulsion arming and firing unit which we will explain further in the video ahead. This is a propellant section and takes up around 40% of the missile's space, it is basically a solid fuel for the missile. 
Just behind the propellant is the motor pump and actuator, and the last section of the missile is the fins that help steer the missile. It weighs around 317 kilograms or 698 pounds. It is approximately 5.1 meters long and has a diameter of 254 millimeters. Let's compare this to a person to understand its size visually. Now that we established the basic missile system, let's look at the step-by-step -step process of how this is launched. Step number one. Multiple Patriot missiles will be deployed to provide overlapping missile coverage. Step number two. The radar electronically scanned the sky, searching the entire horizon with overlapping pencil beam. Step number three. Let's take two targets to help us visualize. An intercontinental ballistic missile fired by the enemy from the horizon. And a low-flying cruise missile like this one, approaching near the friendly bases. Step number four. When the target is detected, the radar communicates with the computer in the engagement control station. Step number five. Targets can be tracked manually or automatically and change the designation from hostile to friendly if and when appropriate. Step number six. The engagement control station then gives the command to the launching station with the required data. Step number seven. As per operational doctrine, any engagement requires two Pac-3 missiles to increase the probability of the hit ratio. Step number eight. The missile in the early stages uses inertial guidance specified to launch from the engagement control station. Step number nine. Just shortly before arrival at the intercept point, the missile uses the KA band seeker to track the target. An optimal aim point is selected and terminal guidance is initiated. Step number 10. The short propellant motors fires explosively to refine the missile trajectory to its target. This helps the missile to reach its point of trajectory and enables the missile a hit to kill intercept of the target. Direct body-to-body -body contact with the missile creates very high energy which helps destroy weapons of mass destruction. Once the threat has been destroyed, the remaining Pac-3 missiles will be terminated by the engagement control station. Let's simplify it even better. Number 1. Radar sweeps the sky for threats. Number 2. Sends data to control station. Number 3. Launchers fire the missile. Number 4. Pack 3 missiles are guided to the target by the engagement control station. Let's look at the pros and cons of this missile. The Patriot missile system can detect and respond to incoming missiles within seconds, which is essential in defending against surprise attacks. The Patriot missile system can be integrated with other defense systems, such as radar and fighter jets, to provide a comprehensive defense network. Let's look at the cons. The deployment time for the S-400 missile defense system is 5 minutes while for the Patriot missile defense system it is 25 minutes or more. Its radar is a detection-to-kill system, meaning a single unit performs all search, identification, track, and engagement functions. The S-400 has around 3 or 4 radars. The Big Bird Long Range Radar, the Gravestone Fire Control Radar, the All Altitude Radar, and the last one is the Mobile Mast Radar System. We create original 3D animation from scratch, so please like and subscribe to help us create better animation for years to come.